Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome to Asian Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. Our show today uh, covers Taiwan's defense, uh, uh, Taiwan's relationship to the United Nations, and the role of the Presbyterian Church in Taiwan. And my guest is Dr. Michael Tsai, former defense minister of Taiwan, uh, who also is uh, very actively participating in an organization promoting Taiwan's admission to the UN. Uh, in addition, he is an important figure in the Taiwan Presbyterian Church. So we're so glad to have him with us. He's joining us via telephone from Taipei, Taiwan. Welcome to Asian Review. It's great to have you with us. Hi, Bill. Uh, I'm Michael Tsai, uh, and they're also the friends uh, in Hawaii. Have a good day. <laughs> That's great. That's great. I'm sure they'll yes. appreciate that. Um, well, we have a lot to cover here, so let's get right at it. Um, Taiwan's defense budget. And Taiwan um, mm -hmm. is always saying to the United States, and the United States is always saying to Taiwan, spend 3% of GDP. And Taiwan says it will spend 3% of GDP, but it doesn't seem to happen. Gets close, but it doesn't happen. So what's, what's the problem? What's the problem on meeting this 3%? of GDP in the defense budget? All right. I think it is, it is a problem, as you mentioned. Uh, now, Taiwan national defense budget for the last uh, three to five years, uh, uh, we are, uh, the uh, total budget is about the uh, 100 million U.S. dollars. That's equivalent about the uh, less than 2 percent of the GDP of Taiwan. Uh, this is the uh, that we expected. The reason we cannot reach the three percent, we would like to have three percent of our Taiwan's national GDP as our national defense budget. But the uh, reason is the uh, uh, Taiwan as uh, as a democracy, uh, we have a lot of the uh, area to cover for from the our GDP national income, including the economic development. And also our contribution to the uh, to the international community. For instance, we spend the uh, uh, many and many US dollars in the contribute to the uh, underdeveloping country in Africa, in the uh, South Pacific nations, in the medical and the humanitarian uh, uh, relief, and also uh, contribute to the others uh, educational, cultures uh, development in other countries. And also, we are developing some other area for the uh, national welfare uh, program, uh, and on and on. And the um, we have a national budget. We divide into the three parts. Uh, one part, 50 percent of our national defense budget uh, is go to the personal, uh, the personnel uh, maintenance. And other, uh, another 50 percent is about the 50 uh, million U.S. dollars going to the uh, uh, maintaining the uh, regular operation and, the, and also the uh, new uh, military uh, uh, equipment development and the investment in the research and the new uh, and also including the uh, uh, military procurement program from the U.S. and from other countries. We would like to have in this one part. Uh, uh, the, the annual defense budget and also special budget for the defense, if needed, uh, our parliament would, uh, and also our government would, the, uh, would contribute another uh, probably uh, uh, another uh, 10, 15, 20 uh, million U.S. dollars for the special budget. For instance, in the 19, uh, in the 20, uh, 2004, uh, our parliament, uh, our Congress uh, approved the special budget to buy the uh, uh, to buy the uh, the, uh, the the uh, the submarines and mm -hmm. also buy the Pax three uh, mm -hmm. missile mm -hmm. uh, and also buy the P three C, which would uh, uh, provided by the United States Pentagon uh, and also White House approval. But this uh, the uh, the uh, the Pax-3, uh, the, the, the missile program has been materialized, so the P-3C, the, uh, uh, 
uh, also uh, we have the uh, purchased, but the submarine had not been materialized, did not purchased because of the uh, uh, we we allot we allocated some of the special budget, uh, but the U.S. would not uh, give us the, uh, the diesel powered the aid uh, submarine, so that the. Uh, Although we have only less than 2% of our national GDP for the national defense budget, but we are prepared, as the government promised, that the, if needed, uh, we will allocate another uh, probably uh, uh, quarter of the quarter meaning of the uh, U.S. dollars for mm. the special budget uh, if the uh, U.S. give us the, uh, the, uh, the military procurement program we request. I see. So this is the reason we are looking forward uh, to have a better uh, military cooperation with the United States. If the United States would uh, would give us the uh, uh, procurement program as we requested. Uh, that's very interesting. Well, let me uh, move on to another aspect of the. Uh, it always mm -hmm. seems to be this like argument going on. The United States and a lot of think tanks in the United States say Taiwan should focus on asymmetric warfare. And some go as far to say, you should forget, you know, your F-16s, you should forget your, um, your, your indigenous fighters, you should forget mirages, and just, um, and you should forget major ships, and just develop a, uh, a porcupine force. In other words, a force that's strong enough to repel mainland China if it ever should land on the shores of Taiwan. And by extension, leave the so-called heavy fighting to the United States. Um, but there seems to be a lot of opposition to that within the Taiwan military. The Taiwan military might say, on one hand, well, this porcupine defense is okay, that's a, not a bad idea, but it has to go along with a full defense. We want our fighters, we want our major ships. We want to be able to meet the enemy, meaning, meaning China, head on, rather than waiting for Taiwan to come to us. And in this sense, in this way, we also reduce dependence on the United States. So where do you stand on that argument, the asymmetric argument versus the, how should we call it, the full fighting force argument? Well, I think uh, uh, not only my personal position, but I'll, I believe this entire the uh, national defense ministry now, we are under the uh, strong uh, uh, China's uh, military uh, threat against Taiwan, and the, we're not going to compete with China's uh, military investment and their very, very offensive uh, approach uh, take over the Taiwan. Therefore, for the last five or ten years, uh, Taiwan, we have developed the, uh, we call the very, very efficient deterred, uh, deterrent approach. Uh, we developed the, uh, some of the uh, uh, short uh, range even the medium medium range of the missile mm. uh, to in order to intercept uh, or deter China from taking the further aggressive actions, uh, we can uh, uh, we can, that's kind of the short range or medium range of the uh, of the missile uh, we have developed. We have already employed those, such kind of short uh, range of the missile on the boat. On the ships and also air, air, the air fighting jet, uh, therefore at least we can uh, we can depend on ourselves uh, at least to fight the uh, PLA uh, People Liberation Army. Uh, they are their ship, their military uh, jet or, or military uh, ships. Uh, when they are invade Taiwan uh, at the Taiwan Strait. Uh, therefore, we spend a lot of the budget uh, for the last 10 years, including myself, when I have an uh, uh, opportunity to serve at the MND, Ministry of National Defense. Uh, we have uh, spent a lot of not only the uh, missile, but also in the um, unmanned uh, aircraft. And also we have a lot of the, uh, uh, the uh, we call the, uh, the uh, uh, multiple uh, attacking uh, uh, gun or missile, hmm. uh, we employ this on, a, across the our uh, national coastal area uh, to 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 uh, to tackle uh, to attack the China ships if they are uh, if they are 
if they are crossing our shore. Uh, therefore, as I mentioned earlier, that we spend a million, million dollars in developing this uh, uh, deterrent uh, apparatus, including the missile. Mm. And the, uh, we also developed, the last 10 years, we developed the, uh, the faster, uh, uh, faster uh, the, uh, sh the uh, ships, mm -hmm. uh, light ship with the uh, missile on the, on, on the ships. Uh, so that we, we want to make sure we are able to uh, protect and safeguard uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the open sea near the Taiwan coast area mm. uh, to deter China from taking the further aggression action against Taiwan. Uh, this is in our part. Uh, we are not dependent on the traditional uh, headlong uh, <coughs> The uh, army against army and the navy against navy. No, uh, we know we are not the uh, we are not competing with them. <coughs> Particularly between Taiwan and China, they have about 200 miles, uh, 200. Uh, I'm sorry, 200 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, open water uh, Taiwan Strait. Therefore, uh, if the China want to take the traditional uh, army force against Taiwan, I think China, they, they have to sink in twice because they had to, uh, they had to cross the 200 kilometers uh, uh, water. It's hard for them. Right. Therefore, we, sp we emphasize much for the last 10, 15 years uh, how to, in our Navy uh, and the Air Force cap capability, to, uh, to deter or even to confront with them uh, if they cross the uh, middle line of Taiwan uh, Taiwan Strait, uh, I think we are uh, with certain degree of confidence to deter China from taking this uh, traditional action. And also, on the other hand, we need the uh, United States and also Japan support. Uh, we call the collective uh, regional security cooperation, because China, when they take the, the uh, attack Taiwan, even attack the uh, Japan and Okinawa area. Uh, we have to have a concerted effort together uh, between Taiwan and Japan, uh, of course, in including the United States together to uh, to deter China from taking further the uh, aggression. And this is the reason why the United, when the United States, uh, we are not going to depend on the China 100 percent, but uh, we are depend on ourselves on self defense capability to deter China. Uh, but also, I think. Uh, uh, we need the uh, United States and Japan take a uh, concerted effort uh, to deter China from taking the uh, such kind of offensive, the China's offensive, uh, uh, the action uh, in that Asia Pacific area. Okay, good. Well, um, this might be just a little bit early here, but let's take a break and we'll come back in one minute and we'll continue uh, uh, with our interview. We'll go on and talk about the United Nations. You're watching Asia in Review. I'm your host, Bill Sharp. My guest today is Dr. Michael Tsai, former defense minister of Taiwan. He's joining us via telephone from uh, Taipei, Taiwan. And we'll be back in one minute. 日本語コミュニティ、ハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報、ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちは、ハワイ。各週の月曜日2時から、ぜひ皆さん見てください。ホストの国
In the first part of the show, we talked about Taiwan defense issues. We want to move on and talk about uh, Taiwan's relationship to the United Nations. And then we want to finish up today's show talking about the role of the Presbyterian Church in Taiwan. So, um, Dr. Tsai, uh, you're very active in an organization that promotes um, Taiwan's uh, membership in the UN. Can you tell yes. us a little bit about that organization and your work with it? All right. <clears throat> Uh, we have an organization, nationwide organization, uh, which is uh, uh, committed uh, to promote Taiwan in, into the United Nations, as well as some other international organizations such as uh, WHO, mm -hmm. uh, ICAO, and the, some other uh, international organizations. Uh, we have, uh, for the last, we established this organization called uh, Taiwan. Uh, United Nations Alliance, Tayuna, mm -hmm. uh, Taiwan United Nations Alliance, Tayuna. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, more than 6,000 uh, memberships, uh, including uh, mostly in Taiwan, and also we have a lot of members uh, residing in the United States, Japan, uh, Europe, and the, uh, some other Southeast Asian country. Uh, this is uh, globally. Uh, we have all the members uh, in the uh, in almost every uh, country in the world. Uh, in the past, uh, we tried to uh, uh, engage uh, to engage uh, our participation, our the uh, movement, uh, mainly in the two organizations. One is in United Nations, and another one is World Health Organization (WHO). Uh, Every uh, every May of the years, uh, when the WHO open it, uh, uh, the assembly uh, in the Geneva, uh, Switzerland, uh, this uh, Tayuna we organize a delegation uh, of about 20, 30, 50 people. Uh, this year we have almost 200 uh, uh, members uh, from Taiwan and many from the United States. Uh, New York, California, and so from Japan as well. We go to uh, uh, we go to uh, WHO to petition uh, our uh, uh, our in inspiration uh, to join the membership as a full membership at the UN at the WHO, and also this in every September of the years uh, we also uh, send a delegation. Uh, of about the uh, sometime a few hundred, sometime a few thousand to go to New York uh, in the September, the, the second week of the September when the UN opened it, it, its assembly. Uh, the reason for our activities uh, to join the UN or join the WHO and some other international organizations, uh, based on the uh, several reasons. Uh, the, the first one, the UN Charter and the WHO Charter uh, say clearly that the uh, UN should be open to every nation. Uh, should be their membership should be universal. Uh, this is one of the reasons uh, we should uh, be included in the UN and WHO and some other international uh, organization. The second UN Charter and WHO Charter say uh, there should be the right of self-determination uh, should be substantiated, should be maintained, should be supported by the UN. Therefore, uh, the uh, more than 80 percent of Taiwanese people in Taiwan, we sh we have shown the uh, uh, in the referendum in the 2004 and also in the recent uh, uh, opinion poll, more than 80 percent, 84 percent of the uh, uh, poll showed it. Uh, eight, more than 80 percent of the people uh, would like to join the United Nations as, Ta as, as the name of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. We have been excluded from Taiwan since 19, uh, 1972, uh, when the UN passed a resolution called uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, name of the, uh, the uh, 2758. This resolution passed and the by the UN Assembly in the 19, 1971, I'm sorry, 1971. 
does allow the uh, they expelled the Chiang Kai-shek authority in Taiwan and allowed and allowed the uh, PLC China to be included take over the uh, Chiang Kai-shek seat uh, replace Chiang Kai-shek seat uh, from Taiwan and give the, the PLA uh, uh, PRC the the uh, the membership in the United Nations. But this uh, resolution 2758 passed in 1971 didn't only give the uh, seat to China without mentioning any words about the Taiwan participation or the Taiwan the status in the UN. Therefore, we are seeking for the participation uh, as a member to the United Nations based on the, 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 the UN charters, the right of self-determination a right to universal participation. We have the rights, and also Taiwanese people, majority of the people, uh, also uh, show the 80, more than 80 percent of the Taiwanese people show the uh, strong support for Taiwan to join the UN. And another reason for that is Taiwan has participated, has, has contributed a million and million U.S. dollars to the uh, international organization, to the other developing country. Uh, uh, that's what I mentioned. We, we, for the last 20, 15 years, uh, we give them the almost hun more than 100 million U.S. dollars to the uh, uh, to those uh, country in the Africa, in the uh, South Pacific nations, in the, and also in the Caribbean nations and South Africa nations. We are capable to contribute as a responsible nation uh, in the world. Mm. Uh, Therefore, if we join the uh, United Nations and the WHO, we can contribute more uh, through the, uh, our national economic strength uh, to support the uh, developing or underdeveloping nations. It's and really also, China's, it's China's power and China's clout that keeps Taiwan out, isn't it? Exactly. So mm -hmm. we are, you know, we are not small nations. We, with the, we have the 36... Uh, Thousand uh, kilometer, uh, we are ranking about one uh, the uh, the middle of the nation uh, in, in the uh, members member of the United Nations. Also, we are economical power, as you mentioned. We are ranking top twentieth. Therefore, we are capable. We are if we are allowed to join the UN, we can contribute more uh, through the UN's uh, the uh, sponsorship. Oh, uh, and this is one of the reasons. And the second is the um, if we contribute, if we become a member of the United Nation, I believe we can maintain, uh, we can uh, we can support the UN mission or peace peacekeeping uh, force, and we can uh, make sure that the uh, we can maintain the peace and stability in the uh, Asian uh, Pacific area. Good, you know. The uh, only obstacle, only obstacles is from China. Right. We're sort of running China out of time here. Taiwan is a part. Of Yes. We're, we're, but our time is winding down here, and I want to get to the Presbyterian Church in Taiwan because that's such an important political force, and you're very closely involved <laughs> with that church. I, I agree. Yes. Why is the so Presbyterian Church so politically powerful in Taiwan? Oh, uh, because uh, the PCT, Presbyterian Church in Taiwan, PCT, uh, we have uh, more than a uh, quarter million membership in the, in the uh, in Taiwan. We have more than uh, uh, one thousand twenty uh, churches. Uh, wow, one thousand and twenty church churches. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah, PCT is the largest uh, denomination churches in Taiwan. The largest. And is it bigger than uh, the Buddhists? I say again. Is the PCP, the, the Presbyterian Church of Taiwan, is it bigger than the Buddhists? Does it have more followers than Buddhists? Than the Buddhists? Uh, no, the Buddhists is, I think, the, uh, the, we call the uh, uh, local uh, religions. Uh, there are much, much more members than the PCT. Mm -hmm. But the, in the Christianity, PCT is the largest uh, denomination uh, in Taiwan. Mm. Uh, the reason why this PC is so powerful and so uh, influential reason is the PCT. They are they are they have strong grassroots churches and mm. uh, and the movement. Uh, they support the Taiwan independent movement, 
in the 1970s, the uh, PCT issued the, uh, the uh, Human Rights Declaration, which uh, in this uh, Human Rights Declaration, PCT uh, committed uh, to support it, uh, Taiwan become a new and independent country, which has been supported by majority people in Taiwan, including the uh, non-PCT non uh, uh, regions and also uh, in Taiwan, uh, more than uh, 70 or 80 percent of the population in Taiwan, they believe, they believe that Taiwan should, be, should become a new and independent nation uh, separate from China. Hmm. Uh, they'd like to be Taiwan be a free and democratic uh, with the uh, respect of human rights. And that has been supported by the overwhelming majority of people in Taiwan and the PCT support and it's very important part, uh, influential uh, part in this kind of independent grassroots movement in Taiwan. Mm. And this is the reason why PCT had, for instance, you know, a week ago, uh, a week ago, more than uh, 300 uh, PCT um, pastors or ministers participated in uh, an assembly uh, or the, uh, mo the movement we call the, uh, and the in the, uh, a summary uh, uh, held at the uh, city heart, the heart of Taipei City. And the thousand and thousand Presbyterian Church members uh, joined this uh, movement, a summary. This, this, this is one of the examples why PCT has so powerful and so respectful uh, by the, uh, from the uh, grassroots movement in Taiwan. And I believe, and I hope... Okay, Michael, we're down to Taiwan. one minute here, so we, we have to wind it up pretty soon. I just was told we have one minute left. Mm. All right. Therefore, I think uh, the PCT is a very powerful, respectful uh, uh, the religious uh, the organization. They will continuously uh, inspire the, uh, the Taiwanese people and inspire the... Uh, uh, well, well, wishes uh, people around the world. Okay, that's good. That's really good. Uh, well, we covered a lot of ground today. We talked about defense issues. We talked about Taiwan's relationship to the UN. We talked about the Presbyterian Church of Taiwan, and we did all of that in 30 minutes. That's really pretty good. I think we can pat ourselves on the back for that. So I want to thank you very much for joining me today from Taiwan, and I want to thank you and our audience for watching. And uh, join me next week when my um, guest will be an old friend of Asian Review, Dr. Jerome Keating. We'll see you then.